This is McFly Angler. starts now. So to make this dubbing brush we're going to use a base fiber. You can use uh, EP fiber. This is actually Congo hair. It's practically the same stuff just a little cheaper. And this is I believe the polar bear color. And the other stuff we're going to need is some type of leggy dubbing. dubbing. Um, I really like this uh, by Fly Tires Dungeon also. All this is actually by Fly Tires Dungeon. Uh, this is the sand crab dubbing in the honey crab color. And I'm going to use some flashy dubbing like the starburst in light orange. We're going to cut this to length. We'll start by grabbing a large relatively large chunk like this. So in about two inch chunks. Now that, this doesn't need to be perfectly cut. Then Prepare this by pulling it out, mixing it like this. This will kind of align the fibers. And this you can tell is relatively short. I need a little more than that. So if you're going to be tying this a little smaller, you can make these shorter, one and a half inch, even one inch. So here's the starburst dubbing. Now this is much longer. We're going to want this cut. Cut it in thirds. This does not have to be perfect. Just going to add a little flash. All right, so start with a fair amount of, again, make sure it's dubbing wire, OK? But start with a fair amount. Double it up like this. this is a quick and easy way to start it. You just basically put it on the twister. Twist it up. Like so. Alright, so you stretch this out. Put some wax up and down. Capture it on the other hook. And then rest it here. Now, this is, if you don't have this table, first off, I highly recommend getting it. It's one of the best uh, dubbing brush tables I've ever used. But this is made by Oasis Benches. There's other ways of doing it with other tables. This, I find, is the easiest, quickest, and best uh, table, in my opinion. And real simple. You just start laying the material. Spread it out a little bit. You could go right to the edge of the board. We'll go a little longer. This does not have to be spread out too much. It will once you comb it in. Just add a little flash. I feel like I'm getting in the camera here. Let me go back over here. this right on top. And basically you're kind of making a EP tarantula brush, basically what this is. All right, once you 
Since you got that, pull this out. And by the way, it really helps to have dubbing wire on a bobbin holder like this. Come in. I always like to place it down like that with my finger and then loop it. Twist it a little bit. Then take some cutters, cut off the wire. This has this nice, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but right here there's a little um, holder here. You can hold all your tools. And then you can just take this holder there, place it aside, and twist up. When this starts kind of wrapping around itself right there, I just kind of push it back. So you can twist like this, you just twist it, and then you can counter. So over here, let's see if I can move this over so you can see it. Over here, there's a little knob that you can twist this way. What happens is this will cord up quicker and this will cord up a little bit slower. All brushes are that way. Um, all brush tables, I mean. Um, it's just kind of how it works. So you can twist this side a little bit while you're twisting. You can see this. This is heavy. One little pool. That'll spin quite a bit. Just love this table. Look at how big and long these brushes are. They're about 18 inches, roughly. You can get them up to that. This one's probably 17. And that's pretty tight. Okay. Then take a brush, like a pet brush. They're all cheap. Go to PetSmart, Walmart, even. You can get these for a couple bucks. They're not that expensive. You just brush this out. Now, this has a little spring on it, you can see. And that's gonna keep, when I'm brushing on this, it's gonna keep this from snapping the, gives you a little, little give on the, the wire, it won't snap on you. Then you can pull out all the extra fuzz, there's some other stuff in there. You could always reuse this if you want for your next brush. Cut one side and the other just comes right out. You get a little loop at the end. This should make what I'm tying today, five of these uh, roughly. And then you want these SL11s. I'm using one aught. So you want to place your hook securely in your vise. You want a pretty strong thread. This is Vivas 140 Power Thread in pink. You start fairly close to the eye of the hook. It doesn't have to be right at it. You want to build a thread base. You want this fairly far back, this first one, because you need a little room at the head here. That's about where we're going to put it, which is about an eye and a half or so length. Now we need some lead eyes. We're actually going to use two. So we need, I'm going to go with this pearl white for the front. And then that's just plain because you're not going to see it, the plain lead in the back. These are a little more expensive, but they're nicer looking. So, um, but this is going to be hidden, so we don't need it. But both are going to be small for this size. Uh, again, you don't want to go super heavy. Uh, even though it is a larger one out size, but uh, since we're using two of them. Now, if you were going to tie it in a smaller size, I'd go with the extra small, but small works for this size. So you guys all know how. Put on eyes, X wraps, and under wraps. So this is the X wrap on top. And then I go underneath with X wraps, a couple of them, and then go under wraps underneath it and that locks it in now you're putting a lot of torque on this that's why you need a pretty strong thread and then I just kind of rotate it look at the hook 
make sure that's on perpendicular and straight. And you come back to the bend of the hook. Now, I'm sorry guys, this is kind of hard to see. You're pretty far away. I might put on a different lens here, one second. Okay, that's a little better. There we go. So now, you can see I went back a little bit and then forward just a touch. Now we need more of this sand crab dubbing. Really anything that has legs in it. I know there's a couple brands out there. So, I'm gonna take, we'll pinch out, divide it in two, set one aside. There we go, we'll use this for the feelers. Want some of this dubbing. Tie it in right on the center, like so. Down into that, pull the forward facing rearward. There we go, it's gonna be the feelers. All right, then we need some eyes. For this larger size, this is the size I am going with. You can tell that these are just a little smaller. This is gonna be for the size two that I'm tying. Tying this in a couple sizes for a customer. I'm gonna need two eyes. I've done a video before on how to make these eyes really simple. All right, now for the eyes. These have kind of a, like a little bend to them because I made them with mono, which had a bend, so you want that bend angling outward a little bit. And you want these to extend like halfway into this dubbing, roughly. So I'm gonna tie this one on this side first. You want it at an angle, as you can see. I've got an angle going here. You want this tied in quite tight, right up to that um, <clears throat> start of this dubbing. Go back just a little bit here. And then you're gonna take it and bend it. Let me see if I can turn this for you guys to see. I'm gonna bend this back quite a bit. And then pull this back, go under it, make another wrap, go under it, make another wrap, and under it. And that'll kind of help keep it out a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now you want this, we're gonna pull this in. We're gonna try to angle them or align them to be the same length. So again, on an angle downward. You can play with this a little bit after just to make sure that they're in well. Bend this out. Go under, make a wrap, go under, wrap, go under, and that's gonna help kind of keep these angled outward. And this is pretty thick. You could use scissors. I like getting these clippers for it. Just makes it easy. I'm gonna just cut that off. And then we'll just kind of cover all that with thread. Now we're gonna take this Loctite, little brush on. I'm just gonna add it right up against those eyes. Now we need some cactus chenille in pink. You don't even have to worry about letting that dry. Just gonna capture um, this chenille on. This is cactus chenille. And we're just gonna have to be perfect. It's mostly going to get covered up. It just kind of adds a little bit um, accent there. So now to make the the hands on it or the claws, we're going to take this ultra chenille and this is in white color. We're going to double it up like this. We're going to put a knot in it. This can be a little tricky. 
go. Make a knot in it. Made another. You don't have to be exact size because you're going to trim them to length. Then you're going to take a Sharpie or I like these ad markers from Shark Pack. Use yellow. This is lemon yellow. You don't have to use the exact same color. Just yellow. A little higher up, go with red. This is crimson color, they call it. It's just red. With one side and the other. I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. You can grab yourself a little lighter. It does not have to have a fish on the front, just a big lighter. Now I got to get close. I got all this camera equipment here. You got to blow it out so it'll want to. Burn the tips so it makes a nice splay out, kind of like a little claw. You can see these kind of bend downward here, um, or it's turned over upward, but you want them bending out, okay? And this one's a little short, so it's gonna be kind of tricky, but I'm just gonna. You want this. See where the, the knot is coming just a little past the eyes there. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, when you're doing this, you want this to line up roughly the same. Just kind of measure it against the other. You can do a couple wraps and maneuver it. You want this kind of angled up. It's not wanting to cooperate with me. There we go. Cut the excess off there since that one was a little longer. And you can see this is kind of bulking up. You're going to want to Really lock that in. It wants to jump on you, and that's okay. Just make sure that's really tied in tight so they don't pull out. And then we're gonna do one more little dot of glue just to make those legs stay in nice and tight. So now we got this dubbing brush that we made. We're gonna pull the fibers back tie this down back up to right where the legs were tied in or the claws tie that down pull this back use some clippers here cut off that excess wire and then this will cut your thread so you want to use your fingernail to push it down a little and there's some glue there already, so we don't need to glue that. It's already in there. So now we need two rubber legs. This is going to be more of like a blue crab coloration. So I've got this that has like pumpkin and blue. We need two of these. Cut the tips off. And you can see how I like to have the blue at the end. So right at this end, there's blue, and at that end, I'm going to double it over. And I got two legs, and basically four. So this one has blue in the center, this will be used for the front. Next we're going to take one of these rubber legs, the, the shorter side, double it over onto the thread, tie that down. One side going this way, one side going that way. 
bring your thread back a little bit and then we're going to go forward and back to create a little bit of a thread uh, bump there and you can use little like hair clips to kind of keep this out of the way for now and that really helps and we'll put a lead another lead uh, this is just plain right up front here little space between the, the legs there but not much you don't need much there all right so x wraps and under wraps and then really lock that in you want to make sure that is even with the other one you can even look like I'm turning my head over to the front really make sure that those are even and you come right to the center there take your first set of legs and work it over to the side turn your fly like this take your next set of legs right in the center work it over to the other side and then you want to hold these legs like so wind up not directly behind the eyes but like right about there you want to come back this way I'm going to turn it this it's a little easier to work with pull your legs down keep them kind of straight parallel on that shank it doesn't have to be perfect then you're gonna work the thread up to the front here you can take this off and it'll just get in the way and then we are gonna add some super glue again yes a lot of super glue and dab it on the, the leg or the eyes just to make sure those stay secure and then we are gonna start working this brush now be hard to see here I think let me try to turn this maybe for you we're gonna do two wraps in front of these first legs it's a little hard to do because the material wants to trap the legs that's one and two and then you want to kind of helps to get your bodkin and kind of pull the legs out like so Actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to do three. My bad. I forgot this size. Need, there's a little more space. All right. So then you pull. So you've got this set of legs here. You want to pull it forward. Get this one. That one keeps on wanting to get trapped. Pull that forward. Position those legs because it will keep it there. Find this one, pull it forward, and we're going in between the legs and that first set of dumbbell eyes. Okay, and then you're going to jump under those dumbbell eyes so you can see the dumbbell eyes right there. And I'm going to pull this leg out of the way and jump under. Pull that leg out of the way, stay in front. And then we're going to go in between the two splayed out legs here, like so. Same thing here. And I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to see. My fingers get in the way. All right, so now we're in between. You want to pull those legs back. Go between those once and then just finish with one more wrap behind those eyes and then you want to pull it forward so you can see here I'm going forward here take your bodkin move this material out of the way so you're not trapping a lot of it 
and that actually already kind of moved out of the way pretty well. You want to trap as little amount of these fibers as possible. Go ahead and one, two wraps, pull tight. And then pull this brush back, pull all the fibers back and wrap in front. Okay, so now you want to come in, make sure we don't cut the legs or your thread. I always like to go up with it like this. Nip that off tight. And then again, we're going to push with our fingernail to move that out of the way so it doesn't cut the thread. We'll just kind of taper that there. All right, so doesn't have to be a perfect whip finish. We're gonna be coming back over it. Just kinda get that there. Um, it's gonna get out of our way so we can work with this and then we're just gonna pick this out. Be careful not to Pull the legs out, because that can happen. And then they can break, and then you're, you've got a five-legged crustacean rather than a six, which, you know, it'll look injured. That's probably all right, you can still fish it. But you know, we're trying to make this perfect. So just keep picking this out. All right, and then we start at the bottom here. We're gonna pull all the rubber legs down and out of the way. We're gonna trim this, so. Now I say without question, sharp scissors. That's with any fly, really. But these risen razor scissors really are very, very, very sharp. Um, and they cut really well. The thing is, we're using dubbing that has legs in it. And without really sharp scissors like these, um, sometimes you'll be cutting, 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 cutting before it actually cuts. And these almost always cut with one cut. Very, very sharp. So take your razor scissors here. Really like these by Risen. We're just gonna cut this flush. On the bottom, you don't need a lot of fiber. Okay, so that's flush. And on the top, we're going to do the same thing, pull everything down so we don't get the rubber legs in the way. It's okay if you're pulling down some of the fiber. We don't need to cut all of it right now. And then see how I've got my scissors angled kind of up towards the hook point there. You can trim a little more on the sides. And then I always like to trim at an angle like this. Just get a little more right at the head trimmed. We're making like a, a space there, um, or kind of a ramp for the next material. Then for the sides, so we want to pull these rubber legs down and out of the way. We want to try to get as much of the fiber without the legs as possible here. Make it a little easier, make a one trim. I'm going to stroke these up. You can even use your bodkin to get some of it. Notice some was a little. There we go. And then we're going to angle this cut again, another another angle. Okay, from the eyes. You can see how sharp these scissors are. This, you know, these little rubber legs don't want to get cut. So you really you know, got to use some sharp scissors with this, but be careful not to obviously cut your rubber legs. Okay, move the rubber legs back and kind of position where you want them. And we're going to do the same thing with this side. Move these back and out of the way. Don't pull the rubber legs too hard. They will possibly snap off. I've had that happen a couple times. Just 
stroke up these fibers, keep these out of the way. Another uh, angle cut. Gonna look at it. Trim any errant fibers out the bottom and whatnot. There we go. A couple of these will pull out more, and, and that's okay. Kind of gives it an interesting look. When trimming more, just again, don't cut your rubber legs. And just kind of clean it up, make it look as even as possible. I've got this on an angle down. You don't want it like this, or it'd be hard to do this, so it's a slight angle down. All right, we're gonna start our thread again, right at the head here. And then you want about that much for this size, maybe a little less for the smaller sizes of EP fiber in like a brown. You're gonna measure this out on your hook, but then double it over, trim it, taper the, the tips a little bit. There we go. You know what, I made that a little long. So again, just taper those ends. So we're gonna take this and we are gonna put the dubbing with legs on and keep that at the bottom. And then we will tie this in right in the center. I'm gonna hold it like this, come down, not quite to the eye, but come down a little bit, right up there and then end with your thread right right behind those dumbbell eyes. Pull this forward and yes this is a big bulky front head. Got a short piece there that's just sticking out and we're just going to build up this head. Oh. Hold on guys, my thread did something funky here. Caught on itself, but it can't pull through. So I'm gonna whip finish and fix this. What the heck, you can see that that caught on itself. So I don't know how that happened. I've never had that happen before. All right, so again, pull all the stuff out of the way. Just build up this head a little bit. You're gonna have semi-messy head on this and that's okay. All right. And then whip finish and always whip finish from the rear to the front, okay? One, two, three, four. It's fine, it doesn't have to be, a, we're gonna end up epoxying this, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You want a comb, these cheap little combs that you get at like Walmart, that's fine. It doesn't have to be anything special. Just comb this out. I always like to do it off the vise. But, allows me to get it up into the, the hook there. do that that's fine just replace it back so see how that's combed up I take this uh, UV curing resin by Solarez it's got a paintbrush on it it's real nice it's the ultra thin and we are gonna put a little bit as you can see right in the crack of the eyes 
on either side. Get a little more on a lot of this stuff and paint it up over the whip finish. Okay, just don't get it into the eye of the hook. You want a little bit on the actual material there. Okay, and we're just gonna paint the top for now. We'll come back. What I do is I pull this down and then cure it. And that kind of cures that material angled more down as you can see. All right, so let's turn this over. Give a quick, uh, I've got a lot of errant fibers there. I got these little scissors from Risen. They're nice and fine. I use them for real small flies and such, but this kind of thing, it works perfect. So just get some of that out of there. Doesn't have to be perfect, but try to make it as clean as possible. You get a fair amount of this resin. Put it over the eye there, over the whip finish. You can come back over the front again, just kind of clean it up, make it smooth, and then rotate this as you cure it. And start from further away and then get closer. There we go. You can bend these legs out a little bit. There we go. It's hard to see here how this really looks because of the vice gets in the way. Let's see if I can get some better photos of it. It's a neat little crowd. Now I didn't come up with this. Um, I had a customer send me a picture someone else has and asked me to tie it. I thought it was a pretty cool little crab. I could be tying it wrong or not exactly how the originator had planned because there's no tying video on this of how to tie it, but kind of came up with what I thought would look good. Should sit pretty well on the bottom with the hook point angling up. Now, as you guys know, if you've watched my other videos, I work closely with two companies, Dooley's Fly Fishing and Risen Fly Fishing. Dooley's Fly Fishing, I get all my you know name brand materials from. They are a brick and mortar fly shop, uh, but they also sell online. Uh, they ship right to my door, makes it easy. Um, really great customer service from both of these companies. Uh, Dooley's, you can just kind of send them a, I, I do this all the time. It's like, okay, I'm tying this fly. This is what I need. He sends me an invoice and gets it off to me. It makes it really easy sometimes I even ask them what what materials do I need for this fly if I can't figure it out if I've not seen it um, he's real helpful um, the owner of it at least and uh, yeah so check him out for sure he's offering everyone a discount so go to www.dooliesflyfishing.com and type in McFly at checkout and you'll get 15% off of everything in his shop again all the name brands and fly tying materials he has a good selection if he doesn't have it um, you can request it and he'll try to get it in for you. Also, I work with uh, Risenfly. Risenfly creates their own materials um, and rods and reels. Um, they even have a great line of hooks. Their hooks are great. I'm not using them today because this was requested by my customer, but I do use them for my own fishing. Um, they're great hooks for a great price. Um, and they, I mean, obviously I'm using their tools. I, use all their tools, everything they sell is high, high quality, but a better price than most of the competitors, I mean, any of the competitors. Um, you, you're not getting name brand prices, but you're getting name brand quality, basically. Check them out also, they are also offering everyone a discount, 15% off, so it's the same discount code, McFly, at checkout, so go to www.risenfly.com, type in that McFly discount code and you will get 15% off of everything there as well. I will see you guys on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.